Look at that, baby. You folks, keep watching the rest of the space force. This is the man. I got him. I'm here with David Block, Outdoor Edge. How you doing, Dave? Good to see you, Dave. Hey, doing great. It's always a pleasure to see you and see the new stuff that you've got. And, you know, we did a show, which you can watch online. We did a mule deer hunt, and then we went into the garage, and we butchered that up using the Outdoor Edge product. We gutted it, skinned it, and then butchered it and used, used nothing but that. Now, my dad was talking about it. And he's got like an array of knives he'll have right. out, right? Like he's preparing for this. It's like the Super Bowl, you know, for, him, for when we're cutting up a deer. He's all excited, got the coffee going. And so we go over there and I bring over, of course, the, uh, the pack, you know, the, the game processor. The game the processor. Butcher kit. Yeah, it's great. And so that. by the time we got done, my dad said, I never had to sharpen these knives once. Excellent. He was sold. Sold on them. I'm sold on them. Nugent sold on them. We're all sold on them. Tell us what you got new for 2011, because I'm dying to find out. Well, we've got some, got some more great products to make your job in the field easier. Our brand new item is the skin and bone. Now you ask, what's a skin and bone? It's basically a skinning and deboning set. Here's the pouch. You snap it open, and basically it turns into a belt scabbard. So it's a two fixed blade set. You basically wear it on your belt. What you get here is you got the deep belly skinning blade nice full deep belly knife you got the gut hook for opening second knife it's a shorter deboning knife now when I say shorter our general uh, uh, boning flays uh, six six inches this is 4.8 so it's a it's a smaller size it's designed getting around those bones cutting the meat off the carcass getting that back strap out so you skinner deboning knife in the pouch now to clean it you unsnap this here so just unsnap this pull it out so real easy for oh, cleaning nice. And sharpening your knives, you need to touch them up. Right. You got a carbide sharpener. So basically, two knife set, carbide sharpener pouch, belt scabbard. So real lightweight set. That is nice. Got a great new saw. It's called the flipping saw. Now check this out. Super thin. It's an aluminum handle saw. It's an all metal saw. It's a 6061 aluminum. It's machine. Then we put a rubberized coating so it's a non-slip grip. You can right. feel that. Oh yeah, nice. Nice and yeah. tacky. And it's designed just it's designed and constructed just like a folding knife. You can just see the quality here. Right. So it's uh super light, super thin, but it's oh, a workhorse. Yeah. Full seven inch blade. I mean, you can really go to town cutting wood, and that's the interesting thing, the tooth pattern. We went down to a smaller tooth size. Now any size will cut wood effectively. Bone is the tricky thing. Right. You need a smaller, smaller size tooth pattern for getting through that bone. So mm -hmm. it's a great wood and bone saw, flipping saw. Now another knife that we came out with new. This is our Nimbus knife. We introduced this last year, and it's it's basically a one hand opening, closing knife with a pocket clip. Oh yeah. Great size, you know, really nice size. Exactly. It's got a black, oxide coating, which is an anti rust coating. Oh well, we, uh, made the larger version, the bigger brother, the Stratus. Brand new for this year, mm -hmm. the Stratus. Just so. a good all-around pocket knife to have on you for any, not, not just hunting and fishing, for anything you need a, a knife for. Coring out an apple, preparing your lunch, caping out a deer head, right. skinning, general utility, clip, one hand opening, one hand closing. Nice. Last new product here is kind of a cute little set of knives. Now, these are called the Mini Grip. It's the Mini Grip. The mini blaze in orange and the mini babe. Gotta love the mini babe. Yeah, the I was sitting there looking. Like, my know? daughters would love to have one of those <laughs> hanging in their purse. You know, you never know. It's funny when you say you never know. Never say never. I said two years ago, some pink items are coming in the market. I said I don't think Outdoor Edge will ever make a pink knife. Well, I was wrong. Yeah, exactly. Outdoor Edge got a pink knife. Now, there's a lot of mini knives out on the market. The problem that I have, they're kind of toy knives. You, you can't grip them. There's no grip there. I designed this. You know, I always, when I design a knife, I want ergonomics. I want it to really fit your hand. You can see it's a full three-finger grip. So full three-finger grip, we got this 
Uh, lanyard on the back, wrap oh, yeah. your pinky around. That's a knife. Yeah, it you, is. you can really cut with that. And so nice for carrying. You can put it in your little little key pocket there. But a great great little utility blade, keeping your uh, purse or in your pocket. Of course, not my purse, but the ladies right, there. Right, but. right, right. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't have a purse either, so. Yeah, you know. <laughs> but no, uh, no, that, no, that would be great. I mean, and it, it's nice to see that you got that because women in the outdoors, I mean, it's become a big thing. Well, you know, here's the thing. Unfortunately, this is not a growing sport. How do we, how do we bring more people in the sport, bring youth in the sport? The thing is, is how do we get the kids to hunt? You bring your wife or your girlfriend into hunting. Mm -hmm. Teach her how to hunt, then your kids will hunt. Right. The whole family needs to hunt together. Exactly. So that's the message there. So, so uh, yeah, neat little gift knife. And the thing is, too, nice knife for the ladies. Guy goes, what, what, what am I going to get her? It's Valentine's right, Day. It's her right. birthday. Pink knife. Well, so. And you know the thing about it is right at first, guys, she may go, oh, he got me a knife. But you know what? About two months later, a month later, three months later, she's going to thank you for getting that because she'll be, I use that, like, all the time. Knives are cool. Knives yeah. are tools. Everybody needs them. We use them every day. Exactly. Now, Dave, you have a, a website. We do. Our website is uh, OutdoorEdge.com. Okay. And uh, you can see all our items there. And um, also, we, uh, we have our own TV show, uh, Outdoor Edge's Love of the Hunt. Right. It's on uh, Versus and Pursuit Channel in July through December. And uh, we basically do um, big game hunting action. And then we do a home processing tipper technique every week in the butcher mm -hmm. block. So... So uh, see some good hunting, and then also uh, learn how to prepare your game at home. Exactly. And when are these going to be available? Uh, everything's going to be available this spring. Of course, we're at the SHOT Show in January, so everything's going to be available by May. should start seeing them in stores. All right, David, appreciate it. Hey, always good it's seeing always, you, Dave. It's always nice you. seeing you, Thank and you I appreciate it. Outdoor Edge. I'm here with uh, Kelton Hatch. Kelton, how you doing? Good. Uh, Idaho Fish and Game. Uh, Kelton, w explain uh, to us what you do for Idaho Fish and Game. Well, my, my job is... Uh, I'm working i and &E. I'm the information officer, and it's a regional conservation educator. So I'm in charge of the hunter ed, the bow hunter ed, uh, media contacts, and right. I work with a lot with the media. Uh, we do have hunter ed coordinators that run the hunter and bow hunter ed program that we kind of supervise it. Right. And then I work sports shows and yeah. just work with, the, work with the public a lot. And I do a lot of educational programs in the school. Right, and the reason I came by Idaho Fishing Game is uh, that's my home state, Pocatell, Idaho. So I wanted to make sure I uh, stopped by the booth and, and talked a little bit about uh, what's going on with uh, the big game in Idaho. Um, right now, the hot topic all across the United States is, and I'm not here to put anybody in a bind. We're just going to talk about it um, about the wolves. Yep. That is the hottest topic. Hunters, I don't know what the percentage is, but they don't like them. And uh, yeah. some of them do. Well, you know, and I, I think it's the manage. I think it, what, what it is is not being able to manage them yet is what they don't like. Well, and, and that's what I see. You know, I've been at the department. I actually grew up over in your neck of the woods. I grew up in Caterpillar and worked all for quite a few years. And, you know, I outfitted for 15 years prior to that, had my own business and uh, worked for other outfitters in the area. And so I feel like I have a pretty good rapport with most of the public. What I've found out over the years is, it's not necessarily that sportsmen hate wolves, it's just like the man not being able to manage them, just right. like you said. And prior to uh, last year, our number one question at these type of sports shows was, what are we going to do with the dang wolves? Except they didn't use dang. Right. Yeah, <laughs> and, exactly. so, uh, yeah. and then uh, we had the hunting season. A great success. I mean, we have 225 tags. We killed roughly 200. We ended up controlling another 200 that year that had been uh, used control action. So we we roughly removed 400 wolves from the population mm -hmm. last year because of depredation and hunters. We still had a good, strong, viable population of wolves out there. Right. We never got a question on wolves other than where can I hunt them, and. Well, cool. And then I was working a check station, and I had one guy come through, and he goes, uh, man, we have too many deer and elk out here. I couldn't, because all I saw was deer and elk all day. I couldn't find a wolf. He was a wolf hunter. And so it was a, it was, a, it was like, was a 360-degree 360 switch mm -hmm. with the, man, the controlled hunt season. We are very disappointed we do not have a hunting season on wolves. We are living a society today that, with as many people as we have in Idaho, and we need to manage wildlife. 
and that doesn't mean you can't you need to manage all the wildlife mm -hmm. you can't just manage a certain portion of it and let another portion run without it and so you know we're we're really working hard towards getting another hunting season established um, we've got people that that's their only job is trying to work on getting another hunting season right and, and I want everybody to understand um, that it's not Idaho Fish and Game that has uh, uh, stopped the wolf hunt. It's, they want it. It's not Idaho Fish and Game. So uh, everybody, you know, across the United States, Idaho, uh, realize that it's it's not our office that has stopped it. It's uh, it's it's above that. Yes, it, it really is. And so uh, uh, you know, we're just going to have to, you know, the hunters are going to have to just band together, stay together keep pushing for the hunting season, keep, uh, I, you know, Fish and Game's going to have to keep, you know, doing what they got to do to, to get that hunting season back for us, because if we don't, uh, you know, in the end, if we don't get a wolf season back ever, oh, we're in trouble. Yeah, I, I, I personally feel that we will. You know, we're starting to get into probably a few things that are getting above my pay grade on being able to talk about. Right, right, but, right. But, right. um, you know, we are definitely, definitely working towards having another season. Um, and we have a viable population. we got some of the greatest biologists in the country to manage the program. And so that's, that's our overall goal is to get back into a hunting season with wolves. Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, bypassing wolves. Let's go ahead and talk about the, the fantastic mule deer hunting and elk hunting we do have in Idaho. Well, it's been just this year was a bona fide booner year in uh -huh. Idaho. You know, we've we've got elk up into the 400 inch range that have been harvested. Um, we've had some just tremendous, tremendous mule deer hunting. Oh yeah. Um, you know, bucks from the 260 range. You know, non typical into that. You know nearly 200 inch typical ranges mm -hmm. um, great bond survival for the last three years we are going to we are looking at possibly having a small uh, loss on mule deer this winter mm -hmm. just because we had s snow early and it stayed in some of our higher elevations but for the most part the state is looking like we're going to have a really good over the winter survival right so and it's not like that's going to impact this year's hunting, that over the winter fawn survival, because those are going to be fawns. Right. And so, but for the good mature bucks, we're going to have a really good, strong population of four, five, I mean, three, four, three, four year old bucks out there. Well, two, three, and four year old bucks out there. You know, and you start looking at that uh, four year old and five year old deer, you're starting to get into some really solid mule deer right. then. Right. We've got, you know, uh, very good soil, high mineral content, great genetics, and uh, we harvested a lot of great deer in Idaho. Yeah, I saw some fantastic bucks this year. Actually, this is one of the best years I've seen in a while, and and there were some big bucks out there. Oh, there, there were. There were some. There were some totes. You know, we well, we've had a couple kids that I know of that during archery season we had a kid that killed a 215 non typical with his bow. Um, I've looked at a, two or three bucks that. Uh, right in that 230 range the, the interesting thing is uh, we kill a lot of really good bucks a lot of our bucks never see the books right. because a lot of people's kind of well that was harvested in no tell them creek right and exactly. uh, but idaho's been doing really well right yeah exactly now kelton where can uh uh the viewers go on the web to check out idaho fish and game to see what's going on and keep up with the uh uh, the reports on the big game and also our fishing or still had runs and stuff like I'll that. I think, you know, fishing, it's been phenomenal. Uh, I know, I know. Phenomenal. And, and you know what? It's not just cold water fishing. Smallies, smallmouth are just well, uh, crappie. Yeah, I've got <laughs> I mean, nice crappie like, this year. Well, and our perch population. I mean, you just start looking out there and there's so much. The waterfowl season this year was fabulous and we still got a few days for that right you know but um well upland game birds this is a booner year on yeah, on, I, on birds too lots of sharp so, tail i saw up there this year go to fish and game dot idaho and it's fish and game right. dot idaho dot gov 
you can go onto our website. We have all the harvest success on there. If you go to Hunt Planner, you can go in there and find out what the harvest success was in each of our units. Uh -huh. That data for this year isn't in there, but from the last year's, in, and as soon as we get all our harvest reports in, we should have that in by May, early June, so right. sportsmen can go in there and look to see what the harvest success was, what drawing odds are if you're looking at a controlled hunt. This That's the beauty, you know, the funny thing, you come down here, you work these sports shows, and people are just in awe that you can buy an over-the-counter deer tag. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, and it's a general tag that you can hunt multiple units with, mm -hmm. and you can hunt multiple seasons with. We're truly blessed in Idaho. You know, I grew up in Idaho. I know that we don't have the deer that we had in the 70s and the 80s, mm -hmm. but we're double the population we had in the 70s and 80s. Mm -hmm. But we still got something really special up there. We do. We, we've got something really special. I mean, any time that you have a you know, 14 to 20 day general season that I can, and a 30 day archery season, that I can hunt from, you know, over a six, seven hundred mile area, because I can go from the Panhandle to southeastern Idaho, right. hunt white tails, and, and if there's leftover non-resident tags, I can buy a second tag. You got to feel pretty lucky. Yep, you do. You do. Kelton, I appreciate it. Thanks hey, a thank lot. Thank you. Yep. Come to Idaho. It's a place to be. <laughs>